Ben Tannehill here. Remember on my old account when I listed my top 30 favorite animated shows? If you do, then you better forget all about it because I'm going to do it again. Why? Well, for one thing, I've updated my list. That's right, cartoons that were on my list before have officially gotten their heinies kicked off and it's time for me to replace them with the other cartoons. Finally, my old version of this wasn't very good. It really doesn't do my favorite cartoons justice. I can't die peacefully unless I make a good video about my favorite cartoons. Also, notice this isn't a top 30 video. Yeah, I really can't put all my favorite cartoons in some kind of order. I don't really like any cartoon more than the other. I love them all equally. So, you might say that I'm kind of copping out on this one, but if you were in my shoes, you'd understand. One last thing, a lot of shows that Ben T. Looney has saluted are going to be on this list. You might think I'm repeating myself, but remember, I'm not the same as Ben T. Looney. I'm going to describe these shows in a more personal manner, and I'm going to explain why I think they stand out among all the animated shows I've seen, not describing how awesome they are. Anyway, let's not waste any more time. Here is my salute on my top 30 favorite animated TV shows. This list will include American animated TV shows, as well as anime. I'll make a separate list of my favorite classic theatrical cartoons. Alright, let's go. Let's start out with the amazing world of Gumball. I told you I wasn't being sarcastic. Anyway, this show is about a cat named Gumball and his fish brother named Darwin as they get into normal kid trouble that is exaggerated for surreal comedic effect. When it comes to this cartoon, it really makes me feel young again because it feels like I'm looking into my childhood. When I was a kid, I had a neighbor who was practically my best friend and he was a lot like Gumball. He was always coming up with crazy ideas for us to do and would often result in us getting hurt or in trouble. And I was like Darwin, as I was innocent and didn't know any better, so I was always getting roped into his terrible ideas, but I still managed to put up with his abuse. Yeah, I get really nostalgic when I watch this show because it's practically my life in animated form. A lot of the things that Gumball and Darwin do were similar to things I did as a kid, like pranking my dad, hiking in the woods, making up extreme board games, and always coming up with weird ways to get out of trouble. I'm serious, this show is so much like my childhood that it freaks me out, but that's in a good way. Also, this is only one of the many cartoons that makes me laugh. I just love how this show is constantly upping the ante when it comes to its own absurdity. I feel like it's watching other absurdist shows and saying, oh, you're going that far? Yeah, we're going to go farther than that. There is also a wide variety of supporting characters that actually have personalities. They're not just objects, they're characters. For example, there's a ghost character named Carrie. She may be a ghost, but she's also dark and gothic. She's not just a ghost that's a ghost. She's a ghost with human traits, and that's what makes her interesting. This show has several other supporting characters that help make it interesting and relatable. Anyway, The Amazing World of Gumball is a show that lives up to its title because it's really amazing in several ways. Next, we're moving on to a cult classic, Invader Zim. Zim is an alien who's sent to conquer Earth, which doesn't seem like a hard planet to conquer. However, the constant zaniness of his sidekick, Gurr, and the intelligence of his human enemy, Dib, make it difficult for him to complete his mission. This is a show that shows no mercy for how wacky it is. When Gurr isn't making you laugh your oxygen levels away, Zim's robotic parents have your share of hilarious moments. Also, I just love how satirical this show is. I'm sure you've noticed that most of the humans in this show are complete morons. Of course you have. I think what's also great about this show is Zim's character. He can be intimidating one second, but he's a wimp the next second. It's so much fun watching him overreact to the little things that he's afraid of. I love the episode, FBI Warning of Doom, for the fact that Zim is afraid of an FBI warning at the beginning of a home video. This is a show that I didn't understand until I got older. When I was at the right age, I realized, hey, I'm nuts, and this show is nuts, so that's why I like it. 
So, this seems like a near-perfect show. However, I'm disappointed by the fact that it didn't have a proper ending. Production of it was ceased before the creators could produce a series finale, and several episodes were never produced outside of the script stages. It's sad we never saw Zim complete his mission. However, for what this show is, it's one wacky show that makes me wish we were invaded by aliens. Next is a fairly recent show that I can't help but to consider a favorite, even though it's not even a year old yet, and that's Wander Over Yonder. It's about a fun-loving hippie and his rough and tumble steed as they travel the galaxy, spreading happiness wherever they go. However, they constantly run into the evil Lord Hater, who makes it his mission to rule the universe, and Wander and Sylvia are the only ones who manage to stop him. This show is created by Craig McCracken, who shows to have a passion for animation. This isn't his first show, but I think this is a show that is the best example of the talent he has. This show has a fast-paced style of comedy to it that makes it resemble a Looney Tunes or Tex Avery cartoon. It has an interesting soundtrack that consists mostly of bluegrass music that you don't usually hear in cartoons. The characters that Wander and Sylvia meet will have some of the most creative designs I have ever seen in any cartoon. Finally, it's full of charismatic characters that just leap off the screen with their in-your-face personalities. My favorite character would have to be Lord Hater. Although I love Wandered Sylvia, every time Lord Hater appears, I cheer. He is a bad guy whose main driving force is being evil, and he has lots of fun with how evil he can be. I love villains like that because when characters love something they do, then I love watching the characters do that said thing. It's a shame that I'm not able to talk more about this show because it hasn't even aired a full season yet, but I know that this show is going to be another Disney Channel hit. It's got all the ingredients that make it a cartoon for cartoon fans, and I see it staying on the air for quite a while. So, if life has you down and you don't know where to go, all you have to do is wander over yonder. When I was getting into anime earlier this year, I was looking for some that matched what I wanted to see in anime, and one that more than exceeded my expectations is Soul Eater. This show concerns three students of the Death Weapon Meister Academy, as their main goal is to get rid of the souls of evil monsters named Kishans in order to make the world a peaceful place. The second I watched this show on Toonami, I knew it was going to be one of my favorite shows. There was just a certain wow factor that set it apart from other animes I saw. At this point, I liked Cowboy Bebop, but it really wasn't something that was that special to me. However, when I stumbled upon this show, I was hooked instantly. It has a unique style that I haven't seen in any other anime, or any cartoon in general for that matter. I really wouldn't be surprised if the creators for this show were inspired by Tim Burton movies. Just look at Dr. Stein's design and tell me you wouldn't picture him in a Tim Burton movie. Anyway, another thing I love about this show is the characters. Like in most anime, the characters are really complex, and traits are constantly being added to their characters and building them up. Some of my favorite moments in this show is seeing the characters interact with each other, and just sitting down and having conversations. Also, there is the action. This show has some of the best animated action I've ever seen. Unlike most action shows that have the same moves over and over again, I can actually tell all of Soul Eater's action scenes apart from each other. Each one is really unique and stands out on its own. The action is also helped by the quality of animation being crisp and fluid. Overall, the action is a highlight of the series, and something I always look forward to. Bottom line, Soul Eater is a show that once I start watching, I want to keep watching until I'm done with it. Now, I don't tend to like 80's cartoons, seeing as how most of them were toy commercial cartoons, but there are a few that stand out to me. One of those said cartoons is the one that kicked off the Disney afternoon block, and that's DuckTales. It's about Scrooge McDuck, the world's wealthiest duck, who has to watch over his three great nephews, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Scrooge takes the boys all on his quest to find hidden treasures and prevent villains like Flint Heart Glomgold, the Beagle Boys, and Magic of Day Spell from stealing his riches. Although the show was made for kids, it felt more like a show a whole family could watch and be entertained by. I for one love shows that have adventure plots to them, as I am one who's interested in cultures outside the U.S., and this show goes all over the world. I have lots of fun watching these characters travel and getting caught up in situations that they have to get out of. Although adventure is a big part of the show, there are times when it stays in Duckburg and focuses on comedy, and this show does comedy well. Another thing I love about it is Scrooge McDuck. Although he can be greedy at times, he doesn't let it consume him. He's still a kind and caring uncle who loves his nephews and is always there to protect them. 
This show has a lot of moments that show Scrooge bonding with his nephews, and those are heartwarming to watch. Bottom line, DuckTales is a show that I watch to go on adventures that I only wish I could go on when I was growing up. Going back to anime, another aspect I was looking for in anime were shows that were off the wall wacky and felt like Japanese Looney Tunes cartoons. None I've seen can live up to the wacky hilarity of Sergeant Frog. This anime is about a group of frogs from the planet Charon who are trying to take over Earth. Luckily for the humans, or Picaponians as the frogs call them, they are led by a doofus named Caro, who's become attached to Picaponian culture and spends most of his time collecting Gundam toys, doing chores, watching TV, and coming up with ridiculous invasion plans that ultimately fail. This is the funniest anime I've ever seen, and as I said before, I feel it comes closest to matching the madcap feel of American cartoons. Although this show does poke fun at pop culture, most of the humor comes from how self-aware the show is, the narrator is always cracking continuity jokes, and there is a lot of fourth wall breaking. So, to anyone who might not get any of the pop culture jokes, there are several types of humor that balance this show out, which will prevent it from becoming dated. I also love the variety of characters. I love how Karo has got to be the worst invader ever. He's basically Japan's version of Zim. He's always coming up with the stupidest plans to conquer Earth, and a lot of comedy comes from how ridiculous they are and how they fail. There's also Giro, who is forced into obeying Karo's orders, despite the fact that he thinks Karo is a complete moron. He spends most of his time causing destruction and having a crush on Natsumi, one of the human girls. Then there's my favorite character, Tamama, who's always obeying Karo's orders, and he's so bouncy and cute. When it comes to episodes, a lot of them have several different stories going on that somehow intertwine with each other, and it keeps me interested, as well as laughing. So, Sergeant Frog is my favorite comedic anime, as it shows us that if we're ever invaded, we've got nothing to worry about. Looking back, a lot of Nicktoons didn't click with me. However, I hold a few of them close to my heart, and one of them is The Angry Beavers. This show is about two beaver brothers, Dagon and Norbert, who try to live their lives as beavers peacefully, but it never goes well for them. This is one of the highest quality Nicktoons I can think of. For starters, the voice acting is amazing. Richard Horvitz and Nick Bakay work together perfectly, as they're constantly playing off the opposing personalities of both beavers. Also, the animation has a style that's so unique that it looks abstract but natural at the same time. Although Dag and Norb don't look like beavers, their designs still make them feel like beavers. Also, when it comes to most cartoons about animals, a lot of shows cheap out and repeat the same plots of other animal cartoons. However, on this show, the writers were able to come up with unique and interesting stories, even though the setting is limited to a beaver dam in the middle of the forest. Although there are some episodes that leave the dam, the plots mostly stay in the forest, and the writers are able to make comedic storylines with the little material they're given. And finally, what I love most about this show is it's a warehouse of slapstick gold. This is one of the few cartoons in the last 20 years that contains slapstick comedy that comes closest to resembling the slapstick of classic cartoons. The timing is crisp and beautifully executed, and the animation is fluid enough to where the gag never looks awkward. So, Angry Beavers is yet another Nicktoon that I hold in high regard, but it's not going to be the last. There were a lot of shows out there that tried to recreate the magic of Looney Tunes, but I feel a lot of them tried a little too hard and didn't exactly get it right. However, one show managed to show admiration for the classics, but it also did its best to be its own show, and that's Tiny Toon Adventures. This show follows the Tiny Toons, who are the next generation of cartoon characters being taught by their teachers, the Looney Tunes. This show is credited with helping to make animated TV shows edgy and creative again. Though I think it goes back a little further, this show was really helpful in making creative animation mainstream again. It was hard to choose between this show and Animaniacs. While Animaniacs felt like a tribute to a sketch comedy show, this show felt more like a tribute to Looney Tunes, so I had to go with this one. I love how the characters aren't carving copies of the Looney Tunes. They're their own characters, despite the similarities they share with their Looney Tune counterparts. The humor in this show is also well written, as it was made just as much for adults as it was for children. Even though it did have a kiddier image than Animaniacs, it still was a similar type of humor and writing. I also love the idea of a show where the Looney Tunes characters pass a torch to a new breed of cartoon characters. Although the Tiny Toon characters never went anywhere after this show, the idea was still original and creative. Also, as a big cartoon buff, I love it when this show has plots that deal with classic cartoons that only classic cartoon buffs would know. 
For example, there was an episode where Plucky is stuck as a wild take from a Bob Clampett cartoon book review. This show is being made by Looney Tunes fans who are just as big as fans as the viewers who they were making the show for. So, Tiny Tune Adventures, come and join the fun. I know you've heard me talk about this show constantly, but I only do so because of how much love and appreciation I have for it. So, how about I get right to it and talk about My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. In the magical world of Equestria, six ponies get stuck in both simple and difficult situations that they have to get out of, and they learn lessons along the way. If you went back three years to tell me one of my favorite cartoons is going to be a show by this title, I would have thought you were crazy. Well, I think this show has broke new barriers when it comes to not judging a book by its cover, or in this case, the title. What I love about this show is that it has honest effort put into it. The crew of the show know they're not making a little girl's show. They're making a cartoon that can reach several age groups from both genders. It has complex characters that can all be put in the same situation and not all have the same reaction to the said situation. It has storylines that the characters work well in and are always unpredictable. It has really bright and fluid animation that is practically theatrical worthy, which is rare for TV cartoons. Finally, my favorite part about it this show just makes me feel good. It doesn't make jokes about how unfair life is to become relatable with viewers, instead focuses on the positives of our lives. This show is able to find humor in simple situations, as well as characters playing off of each other, rather than relying on satirizing the inconsistencies of life that annoy us. Even though playing the cynicalism of life for comedy isn't a bad thing, it's nice to actually have a show that doesn't remind us of the things that tick us off, but a show that actually offers us an escape from all of our problems. Seeing how much these characters love and care for each other reminds us that family and friendship are the best qualities of our lives. It also teaches us that maybe instead of putting knives to each other's throats, we should be more understanding of each other and start extending the olive branch over issues. So, even though this is a cartoon that I love as a cartoon, I see it as more than just another cartoon. I see it as a new step into the world becoming a better place to live, where war and hatred will finally be things of the past, because friendship truly is magic. Another favorite show of mine is Beavis and Butthead. This show follows the short of misadventures of two numbskull teenagers who have very simplistic views of how life works, which causes them to cause chaos or get themselves put in danger. I know, for somebody like me, this would be a show that I would just pass off as just another brainless adult show, but there's more to the show than just two immature teens making immature jokes. This show is a satire on the brain-dead teens who everybody knows. This show is also a great time capsule to the 90s, showing just what life was like back in that decade. It also shows that this show couldn't have been made in any other decade but the 90s, when society was becoming edgy and might have been affecting the youth of America. I also love how complex this show can get out being so simple. The plots of each episode focus on Beavis and Butthead just doing random everyday things, but what makes the show work is how the characters react to it. It's usually hard to predict how they're going to react to it, which keeps it entertaining and hilarious. So, on the surface, Beavis and Butthead might seem like just another adult show, but below it is a humorous and clever look into the teenagers that we pass on the sidewalks each day.